good morning students in the last lecture we end our chapter and now we are going to start our new chapter which is nothing but the superposition of two simple harmonic motion and the terms related or the property related with the superposition of shf so to start this superposition of two simple harmonic motion we must know about the superposition of simple harmonic motion what is the superposition of wave so our first topic is nothing but the superposition of waves or we can also say that superposition of two simple harmonic motions now what is superposition when two simple harmonic motion arrive at a point simultaneously when two simple harmonic motion arrive at a point simultaneously then each simple harmonic motion produces its own displacement independent of the other simple harmonic motion and the resultant displacement is given by the vector sum of the amplitude or the displacement produced by an individual simple harmonic motion this is called as the principle of superposition of waves or superposition of simple harmonic motion we repeat again what is the superposition of wave when two simple harmonic motions arrive at a point simultaneously then each simple harmonic motion produces its own displacement independent of the other simple harmonic motion and the resultant displacement at that point is the vector sum of the displacement produced by each individual simple harmonic motion this is the principle of simple harmonic motion suppose if there are two simple harmonic motion arrive at a point simultaneously and for example first simple harmonic motion gives the displacement of the particle as y1 and y2 be the displacement produced by the second simple harmonic motion then due to the superposition the resultant displacement the resultant displacement y is equal to the vector sum addition of two displacement y1 and y2 therefore we can say that according to the superposition of two simple harmonic motion this y is equal to y1 plus y2 where y1 is the displacement due to first simple harmonic motion and y2 is the displacement due to second harmonic motion now due to the superposition of waves so many phenomena are produced and one of the phenomena is called as the interference one of the phenomena is called as the interference so what is the interference interference means due to the superposition of two waves due to the superposition of two wave or two simple harmonic motion there must be a modification or change in the displacement of the simple harmonic motion and such type of process or such type of phenomena is called as the interference of the simple harmonic motion so how we can define the interference of two simple harmonic motion the interference of two shm is defined as the modification or change in the displacement or we can also say that in the intensity due to the superposition of waves is called as the interference of simple harmonic motion now this interference may be of two types that is constructive interference and destructive interference so 
we see the types of this interference. The types of interference is the first type, it is called the constructive. This is constructive interference. Constructive interference means when the phase difference, when the phase difference between two simple harmonic motion is if the phase difference between two simple harmonic motion is equal to zero. 2 pi, 4 pi, that is twice n into pi, where this n is any integer. Therefore, if the phase difference between two simple harmonic motion is even multiple of pi, even multiple of pi, then there must be a constructive interference takes place. Okay, if the phase difference is equal to this, what is the path difference? What is the path difference between two SHM forming constructive interference which is equal to zero? So it is equal to zero. It is lambda, two lambda up to n lambda where n is any integer. Okay, so if the path difference between two simple harmonic motion is equal to zero, lambda, twice lambda, where lambda is the wavelength, okay, this wavelength is corresponding a phase difference of two pi. So if the path difference is equal to zero, lambda, two lambda, up to n lambda, then we can say that there must be a constructive interference. And when the constructive interference takes place, there is increase in the intensity or increase in the displacement. So we can write if, if the displacement due to a single SHM is equal to Y1 and due to the second is equal to Y2, then we can say that there must be a sum which is equal to Y1 plus Y2. It is called as the constructive interference. Now, what is the second? The second is called as the destructive. Destructive interference. Now what is destructive interference? Destructive interference takes place when the phase difference, when the phase difference between two simple harmonic motion is equal to, is equal to, it is equal to. Pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, up to twice n plus 1 pi. What is this? This is nothing but the odd multiple of pi. 1 pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, and twice n plus 1 means it is also a odd multiple of pi. When the phase difference between two simple harmonic motion is equal to pi, 3 pi, 5 pi or the odd multiple of pi, then there must be a destructive interference. Okay. Now, if the path difference is equal to, if the path difference is equal to, this path difference is equal to lambda by 2, 3 lambda by 2, 5 lambda by 2 or we can say that it is equal to twice n plus 1 upon 2 into lambda or we can also say that this lambda by 2. So, when the path difference between two simple harmonic motion is lambda by 2, 3 lambda by 2, 5 lambda by 2 or it is the odd multiple of lambda by 2, then there must be a destructive interference. There must be a destructive interference produces. So, what is this? This is nothing but the conditions for the formation of constructive interference and the 
destructive interference, you must remember these conditions for the formation of constructive and destructive interference. Now, we are moving towards when two waves, when two simple harmonic motions traveling along the same line mixed with each other, what is the resultant displacement and what is the angle or the phase difference between the resultant simple harmonic motion we are going to find out this equation derivation ok so here we are considering <coughs> we are considering two simple harmonic motion or waves or simple harmonic motion are represented by the two equations and the two equations are taken as y1 is equal to is a sin omega t. Consider this two simple harmonic motion, this simple harmonic motion y1 represent a particle which performs simple harmonic motion but it is starting from the mean position. Okay, this is a sin omega t and this y2 is equal to a sin omega t plus phi. Okay, so the phase difference between the phase difference between these two between these two waves simple harmonic motion is equal to phi. So we can write what is the phase difference between them? The phase difference between two simple harmonic motions is equal to phi. Now when these two simple harmonic motion they are traveling along the same path but in the opposite direction but in the opposite direction then we can say that we can find out the resultant displacement by using such equation y is equal to y1 plus y2 because here we are dealing with the superposition principle so the total displacement y is equal to y1 plus y2 so what is y1 is equal to a sin omega t plus it is a sin omega t plus phi ok now which is equal to it is a sin omega t plus it is a sin omega t into cos phi Okay, so now 
This is the expansion of a trigonometric term which is equal to y is equal to it is sin omega t plus theta. Now here this a is nothing but the resultant amplitude when two simple harmonic motion superimpose with each other and this theta is the resultant phase difference. So what is A? This A is nothing but the resultant displacement or resultant amplitude we can say that. Similarly this theta is nothing but the resultant difference. Now we need to find out what is the resultant amplitude of two simple harmonic motion superimposed with each other. So how we can find? We can find out by using this equation. We substitute this equation by this and this equation by this. So what we done? We square this a square cos square theta plus this a square sin square theta which is equal it is a plus b cos phi a square plus it is b square sin square theta. So now this a square is common sin cos square theta plus sin square theta is equal to 1. So we can write here it is a square is equal to this a square plus twice a b cos phi plus b square cos square phi plus b square sin now this a square is equal to is equal to a square plus twice a b cos of phi plus this cos square phi sin square phi is equal to 1 and this is equal to this. So this is a square and what is the resultant amplitude a is equal to this amplitude a is equal to this is a square plus twice a b cos phi plus b square. Okay, so this is the resultant amplitude a is equal to a square plus twice a b cos phi plus b square where this a and b are the amplitude of the individual simple harmonic motions. So here we discuss about the Resultant amplitude. Now we are find out the resultant phase difference. What is the resultant phase difference? So resultant phase difference can be calculated by again using this equation. Divide this equation by this equation. Okay. So this is a sin phi upon a cos. A sin theta upon a cos theta. Okay. So what is this? It is equal to a sin theta which is equal to this is b sin phi and it is equal to a plus b cos phi. This a get cancelled sin upon cos is equal to tan so it is tan theta is equal to b sin phi upon a plus b cos phi. So what is this? This is the equation for the resultant phase difference between the two simple harmonic motion when they superimpose with each other. So today we discuss about the superposition of two simple harmonic motion when they are superimposed with each other traveling along the same path but in the opposite direction. So in the next lecture we discuss some special cases which are related with this superposition of two SHM traveling along the same line. So this is enough for today. Have a good day. Bye.